Year 13 was by far the busiest year of my life. I'm not exaggerating. I was sleeping at 9.30 p.m. every single weekday and waking up at 5 a.m. Now, that's not just because I was doing my A-levels and I needed to lock in, although that was part of it. Like everyone else, I was actively researching which universities I wanted to go to, applying to them, and working on my personal statement. Not only that though, year 13 was the year when I started this channel, and I set the goal that no matter what, I'm gonna make one video a week, even if I have an exam the next day. But again, it didn't only stop there. I was also training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu three times a week and lifting weights three times a week. And on top of all of that, there were some personal hobbies that I was doing every single day that would take around an hour and a half of my day. And so the question is, how was I able to do all of that? How was I able to balance getting the top grades, working on this channel to the point where it was monetizable, make progress in Jiu Jitsu and the gym, and also stick to my personal hobbies. Well, it wasn't easy, but time management played a huge part. And so by the end of this video, you'll have the exact blueprint needed to manage your time for the top grades. So the first thing that you need to know about time management is that you don't actually have a time management issue. You have a procrastination issue. Think about it. Time is just an abstract concept that we use to explain changes in reality. It's not a thing that needs to be managed. It's just what you do throughout the day. In other words, we all have the same 24 hours per day, and so if you're not able to manage them, then you're just not able to get yourself to do the stuff that matters. You're just procrastinating. And I'll prove this to you. Look at your day yesterday, from start to finish, from the time that you woke up until the time that you slept. Look at every single period of time and ask yourself, did I waste it? Try to add up all of that time you wasted and check how much time you wasted that day. I'm not talking about that one hour block that you spent watching a YouTube video or scrolling through social media. I'm talking about every single period of time, even if it's only five minutes long. You see, we have a tendency of only focusing on the big things. And so when we look back at how much time we wasted throughout the day, we only look at the big blocks of time. And so most people think that maybe they only wasted two hours a day. In reality though, if you also take into account the small blocks of time that you wasted throughout the day, you're gonna notice that the time that you wasted throughout the day pretty much doubles. In fact, my friend recently told me that he was gonna try something new. From the start of the day, he set a stopwatch and he let it run at every single instance when he wasted time. And he showed me by the end of the day, he had wasted something like five hours. And that's one of the best ways of visualizing how much time you actually wasted throughout the day. Okay, so now we've established that we just waste a lot of time throughout the day. That was quite obvious. But how do we actually beat procrastination? Well, as corny as it sounds, Sun Tzu said, to defeat your enemy, you must understand them. In fact, he elaborates, know thy enemy and know thyself. In a hundred battles, you'll never be defeated. And so who's our enemy in this case? Well, it's procrastination. And so let's understand procrastination. Procrastination can be boiled down to one cause, and that is your studying or any other beneficial act that you wanna do is below your baseline dopamine level. We all have a baseline dopamine level. Think about it as the dopamine level that your brain usually expects. Back in the day, that baseline level was very, very low. Just staring outside the window would be enough dopamine. But then technology developed and we were introduced to more and more advanced forms of media. First movies, and then now social media, and now especially short form content. And that has caused our baseline dopamine level to keep going up and up. And so if your brain usually expects this level of dopamine, but then you wanna do something below it, then naturally your brain is gonna reject it. It's not gonna to want to do that action because it's below the baseline, and so your brain won't feel engaged. And that's what causes procrastination. And so to beat procrastination, there's two things that we need to do. We first need to push up the dopamine level that we get from studying so that it's closer to our baseline, and then we need to push down our baseline level so that it's below those beneficial actions like studying. And then procrastination won't be an issue anymore because your brain will look forward to engaging while studying. So now the next question is, how do we make studying more engaging? Well, like I always say, studying should not be fun, but it should definitely not be boring. What does that mean? Well, you shouldn't be excited to study the way you're excited to go out with your friends or see a loved one. But at the same time, you shouldn't be bored while studying. If you're bored, then your brain is not engaged. And if your brain is not engaged, you're not actually learning. And so how do we find that sweet spot? The spot where our studying is engaging enough that we're not bored. Well, like I say in basically all of my videos, it's about active revision techniques. If you're not actively revising, if you're just reading and highlighting, then don't be surprised when you can't spend more than five minutes without losing focus. And if you wanna know how to actively revise so that you get the top grades in all of your subjects, no matter how difficult or boring they are, I've compiled it all in the ultimate guide to acing your GCSEs and A-levels. You first get the video program, which lays out every single step that you need to take from now until the end of the exam season to get the top grades, as well as a personalized study plan that we make based on your subjects that you can just follow so that you don't have to waste time and effort figuring out how you're gonna study for your subjects. We can just do that for you, especially with the exams right around the corner. You also get access to weekly Q&A calls with me and the Elite Revisors community. So if you're ready to get the top grades, click the first link in the description right now. Now back to the video. So we talked about how we can make our studying more engaging so that we get more dopamine out of it. But now how do we bring our baseline down so that studying is actually more engaging than our baseline? 
Well, it's very simple. We just need to live the way we lived before social media. Now, I'm not telling you to go back to our caveman days. We clearly have a better quality of life with technology. That being said though, technology has some downsides. And honestly, the biggest culprits are TikTok and Instagram. They've completely fried our dopamine receptors. That's why when I used to have an important mock or exam coming up, I'd completely delete Instagram and TikTok off my phone. And within just a couple of days, I noticed that I was way more engaged while studying. All of a sudden, my brain wasn't getting enough dopamine from Instagram and TikTok. And so studying looked like a good source of dopamine. Now I get it, completely deleting them might be hard, especially because with Instagram, a lot of people use it to keep in touch with their friends. But here's a pro tip though, completely delete the Instagram app and use the browser instead. This has been an absolute game changer for me. And here's exactly why it works. Instagram invests a lot of money optimizing their app because they assume that most people will use the app. And so even though the browser version has basically all of the same functionality, it's way more clunky and that causes your brain to be less engaged with it. In my experience, without me trying to be disciplined or anything, my Instagram use goes down by two thirds. And so that's how you can decrease your baseline dopamine level and increase the engagement of your studying so that all of a sudden your brain looks forward to studying and actually wants to do it rather than just feeling like it's boring and you'd rather do something else instead. But if you want to get the top grades, then click the first link in the description and get the ultimate guide to acing your GCSEs and A-levels.